Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we've got the Morven Val model, the Sacrosanct models, and the Paragon War Suits. I've assembled them in the manner that I would like to play them, but I'm also going to be showing you the various options that you can use and how you might customize them through magnetization, perhaps, um, if that is feasible for the model. So the first models that we want to look at are the Celestian Sacrosants. They are all equipped with bolt pistols and one of two options, either the Hallowed Mace or as I equip them, the Anointed Halberd. Except the Sister Superior in the middle who has the Spear of the Faithful which is the same as the Halberd in statistics except for its damage is two instead of one. I chose the Halberd option simply because I really like the look of them more and there was small enough difference that I'd be happy using them. I also chose the helmeted heads instead of the hooded heads again because I like the look of them more. I, I will be using the hooded heads elsewhere for any ladies that really don't have very good options for headgear but now because of that I will have six extra helmets. Five of the hooded ladies and also one helmet for a regular sacrosanct. The Sister Superior's helm um, actually has a little bit more filigree than the others. Her shield is also more fancy and so is her plate. So I have an extra shield now and an extra breastplate that uh, matches the rest of the regular sacrosancts. Now for magnetization purposes, the whole arm of your optional weapon that can come off at the shoulder. So it should be a very simple two magnet magnetization should you want to do so. There are even flat surfaces for you to drill into. Shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. And then the next option is the Paragon War Suit. Now they have a variety of different weapons options to choose from. You have in their right hand either a Paragon War Blade or Paragon War Mace, which is connected at the wrist. So you would need three small magnets for that should you choose to magnetize it. Uh, they don't really have much difference, but um, if you did want to choose one or the other, depending on what army you decide to build, um, you can do so pretty easily. On their shoulders, they have either the two storm bolters or the grenade launcher. Uh, since this middle section begins separate from the shoulder pads, it's actually a very straightforward drilling magnetization using altogether six small magnets one for each side of the shoulders and one for each of the small weapon pieces. And lastly, on their left arm is either the Heavy Bolter, a Ministorm Heavy Flamer, or a Multi Melta. Every single one of them get these options, so you're going to have extra um, pieces of these extra weapons hanging around afterwards. Each of these weapons are comprised of three parts that I glued together which connect to this one arm. It actually fits so snugly that even if you put the weapon on without magnetizing it stays put even if I shake it around, turn it upside down. It's pretty cool. If you did wish to magnetize it though it would be a drilling magnetization that would require only four magnets, one for the back of the shoulder and one for the top of each of the weapons since it plugs in at the other connection point. I chose the maces and the multi melters for anti-tank and the storm bolters just to fire at any pesky infantry that might get in the way. Uh, the heads I haven't glued in yet because painting them already installed would be a serious pain in the butt, particularly if you used their non-helmet options. Thankfully, the heads can be plugged in after they are painted quite easily and that is definitely what I would suggest. Morven Val, on the other hand, she has only one option because she's carrying artifacts. She's got the Lance of Illumination from the Custodes. She's got the Paragon Missile Launcher, so there is no Storm Bolter option for her Paragon War Suit. Um, and she's got the Fidelis, which is a special gun only available to her. She, of course, only has one way of posing, but she's looking pretty nice. However, she does have three head options. One helmet, which is the Sisters of Battle helmet, 
um, but with a laurel around it. And two unhelmeted options where same woman but with a different expression on her face. Uh, the face is perfectly fine but the hairdo is horrific and yes I know she's an abbess but um, I'm, I'm not going to be choosing that. I'll probably be putting just the helmet on though I might just switch it up because there's very little known about her yet. So I may just create my own head just for her because I am absolutely want to use her with all of these Paragon War Suits. I want, I want them all over the battlefield. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe if it was at all useful to you and I will catch you in the next video. Bye! Thank you again to everyone who has supported this channel. You guys are fantastic.